Greetings guys, welcome to Slutsk. I'm deep in the provinces. Let's get ready for another adventure. Let's go. You're probably wondering where Slutsk is. Okay, Slutsk is about 100 miles south of Minsk. It's a population of about 60, 68, 66, 70,000 people. And we're deep in the provinces. We're still in the Minsk Oblast. I've arrived here at the train station on a beautiful, absolutely beautiful, sunny Thursday afternoon. So, on that, let's go to my hotel, let's check in, and then we're going to explore what this city has to offer. Let's go. Lovely day. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Значит, вы должны сказать, во сколько вы завтра будете кушать? Uh, завтра um, 9 час. 9.00. 9.00, yeah, guys. Welcome to my room. Let's check it out. Hmm, got a nice bed here. So I splashed out a bit in Slutsk. Nice bed, nice spongy bed. Nice and clean. Yes, we have a fridge. I have to plug it in, and then it'll work. Okay, so I have a kettle. I have some water as well in case I want to boil the kettle. Some glasses, tea. Free tea, complimentary tea in the hotel. Oh, nice flat screen TV. Okay, let's check out the toilet. Let's check out the toilet, guys. All right, let's see what we have here. All right, so this is the toilet here. Very, very young so we have to say the least. Toilet, sink. We have the towel rack with some towels, standard hotel issue. Okay, and the piece de la resistance, the shower. Yes, we have the shower, okay? So anyway, and we have the cupboard. Okay, so we have the cupboard, guys. Nice cupboard, as you can see here. We can put all your clothes in. I don't have much at the moment. Okay, what else do we have here? Yeah, some more. Nice and spacious. Oh, by the way, before I leave, yeah, this is the view from the hotel. Yes, amazing. Salubrious surroundings from the hotel. Okay guys, that's enough from me for the time being. So, that's my room. I'm gonna hit the big bad streets of Slutsk to find out what this city has to offer. Let's go. I'm on the main street of Slutz, guys. This is Ulitsa Lenina, Lenin Street. As you know, a lot of towns and cities in Belarus, the main streets are called Lenin Street because of old comrade Lenin himself. So I came here yesterday, yesterday afternoon, checked into the hotel and I met one of my subscribers, Phil. So we chilled out last night and yesterday evening got a bit of a tour of the town. So I'm gonna take you on a tour of the town of Slutsk. And as we can see, guys, on the left-hand side, all these lovely Khrushchevka buildings that were built in the 1950s. So they're a feature of quite a lot of the provincial towns in Belarus. I have to say guys, my first impressions, it's a rather nice and quaint city. Okay, let's push on. What a beautiful day it is, amazing. The weather is fantastic. That is the Dom Kulturi, the House of Culture. And in every town, every city here, you have what is known as the House of Culture or the Dom Kulturi. And this is the epicenter of all the local cultural events, concerts, music, etc. And if you can see here on the wall of the Dom Kulturi, you'll see a very interesting pattern. And uh, the reason why is because Slutsk is very famous for its sashes. And uh, we are going to go later to the sash, the sash Museum to check it all out. I'm intrigued. This building here, guys, is the Zags. And that's the place where all the couples come here in Slutsk to get married. And if you arrive here on an average weekend, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, this place is full of couples. And they normally go to this park here to get their photos taken, especially if it's a beautiful day like this. And as you can see, walks the path leads straight towards the main government building here in Slutsk so yeah so if you come to get married here guys 
this is the place to be and as you can see on the bridge we can see the locks of all the people here who got married in that office Vanya and Veronica yeah it's a custom here in Belarus for couples to engrave locks and lock them to bridges for example Dima Anna love yeah there's an interesting one Ilya and Anastasia 21st of July 2018 as soon as you get married get a lock engrave your name on it and lock it onto the bridge outside of the Zags office As I mentioned in my previous videos guys, Belarus suffered immensely during the Second World War and Slutsk was uh, no exception whatsoever. So here I'm at the main patriotic war memorial or statue affectionately known to the locals as the Batman statue and it shows a soldier with a flag and the machine gun, submachine gun uh, in his right hand. The Germans invaded uh, the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June 1941 and they arrived here in Slutsk on the 26th of June, four days after the invasion, such was the rapid advancement of the Wehrmacht. And the occupation here lasted for about uh, three years in total. And uh, it was finally liberated uh, on the 30th of June, 1940, 1944, um, the 28th Army of the 1st Belarusian Front. Guys, I'm going to show you something that you don't get in a lot of western towns and cities, but you do in this part of the world. I give you the famous Doska Pacheta, otherwise known as the Hall of Fame. And in these cities in Belarus and of course to a lesser extent in Russia, what happens is some of these, the local council recognizes the achievements of some of the uh, local citizens and they place their portraits here up on the wall of the Hall of Fame. So yeah, so let's have a look at some of these people here. For example, Andre Kozlyak, tractor machinist. Okay, this lady here, Irina Korshak. She works in a shop. Oh, take a look at this serious looking dude, Igor Kozlovsky. So yeah, he works as a policeman and uh, keeps the streets safe from drunks. All right, so quite a lot of people here on the wall. This lady here, uh, Ina Hill, she works in uh, a shop, a furniture shop, Mabel, number 13. Yeah, some very, very serious people here. When I come to Dosca Pochette, I always try to look at if I can get some hotties, but doesn't seem to be any hotties here. Check out, check out Lubov here, Lugov uh, Pichevskaya. She's the operator of a milk machine on a farm. This lady here, Christina Misovskaya. She's a doctor. So yeah, all the distinguished people, this guy here, Ivan Luchik, a tractor machinist. So if you end up on the Doska Pacheta, that's a good thing here for your home city. Good old comrade Lenin right behind me. There's actually a funny story about the Lenin statue here in Slutsk. Actually, he used to sit or stand over there right in front of the local government office. But a number of years ago, comrade Lenin was moved from there to here. And the movement of the Lenin statue created a lot of controversy here in the, in the town of Slutsk. A lot of the older people complained, why, is, why was Lenin actually moved? He was facing west, but then he's facing east. Strange one indeed and the reason why is because the local council decided to put concerts right in front of the local building here and so poor old comrade Lenin had to get the boot from there to here and there he is the great man himself Tovarish Lenin I have to say guys he is nearly he is kind of leaning over a bit I wonder, has he drunk some of the local vodka? Slutsk, like nearly 
every Belarusian town and city has a very, very tragic story. Up to 1941, Slutsk had a majority Jewish population. And they were a thriving community. And that all changed in June 1941 when the Germans invaded the Soviet Union. Straight away after the occupation, the Jews were rounded up and they were placed in ghettos. I'm standing here right just off the main square, the main public building on Ulitsa uh, Kopolskaya Street. Kopolskaya Street, that's where I am right now. And I'm on the side of the old Jewish ghetto. And a great tragedy took place that befell the local population, the local Jewish population, twice in 1941 and 1943. On the 27th of October, 1941, four detachments of Lithuanian police from Kaunas, along with the SS Einsatzgruppen, converged on the town of Slutsk. And over the course of two days, they murdered 4,000 Jews, along with thousands of local Belarusians. And you can see some stones here that indicate the seven candles or stones that are normally placed on Jewish graves. And if that wasn't enough, the surviving Jews and the Jews from, from the surrounding towns were placed here on this site in the ghetto. And on between the 7th and the 8th of February 1943, the Jews, the surviving Jews of Slutsk and the Jews from around the local towns and cities here in this part of central Belarus, southern Belarus, were massacred. Over 3,000 people, men, women and children, were murdered by the fascists. God rest our souls. If you recall from my previous video, I was in Molodechna and I was at Stalag uh, 342. And these stones here represent the people that lived in this town and lived in this ghetto. Today, less than 100 Jews remain in Slutsk from a population of thousands before those events in October 1941. Slutsk as a city was founded in 1116 and after its foundation, about 150 years after it was founded, it became part of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and after that then it became part of the Polish-Lithuanian Confederation when the Grand Duchy merged with the Kingdom of Poland. And it was during this time when it was part of the Polish-Lithuanian Confederation in the 17th century that Slutsk became famous for its belts or its sashes. And these sashes were worn over the left shoulder and they were particularly favoured by the Polish uh, nobility, the Szlachta. And they were made in the style of the Kontus, Kontus Polish style, in that it was made of silk and in often in cases they would have gold and silver embroidered in the belts. So today guys, I'm going to take you to the place where they make these belts and the museum of the Slutskia Pajasa, the Slutsk belts. So join me on a trip to the museum, the place, the product that has made Slutsk world famous. Let's go. Well, what a pity guys, the museum is closed all June, unfortunately. So, we won't be getting a tour of the museum, the Belt Museum, the Sashes Museum, the place, the product that made Slutsk famous. So, let's move on. Let's continue the tour of the town of Slutsk with its one main street. Currently, right now, in the stadium of the local football team, FK Slutsk. And earlier on this year, sometime around March and April, FK Slutsk became world famous. And the reason is, is because Belarus was only one of three football leagues in the entire world that played football games during the course of the Mexican beer uh, crisis. Of course, FK Slutsk, they play in the Belarusian uh, Vishnaya League. It's the top league uh, in Belarus. And when the whole crisis started, 
many of the fans of the clubs in the Belarusian Premier League, they stayed away from the grounds. So this club here, FK Slutsk, became world famous because of obviously it's the sounding of its name or from which the town it derives from. And a group of fans from Australia decided to come together and to support FK Slutsk. And this action saved the club from bankruptcy. Of course, they started off very brightly, FK Slutsk. The, the season, they got off to a fantastic start. Five wins from six, until they were beaten by Bati Borisov. And right now, they're in sixth position in the table, FK Slutsk. However, unfortunately, the day I'm here, the week, the week that I'm here, they're not playing here in this actual stadium. Instead, they're playing away to FK Gorodea, who are in 18th in the league. While FK Slutsk, they've dropped a bit there. They're now in sixth on 18 points. So hopefully, FK Slutsk will get the win, will get the three points that will bring them back a bit up the table. Pitch looks fantastic, like a carpet. One thing that strikes me is that when I visit the small towns and cities in Belarus is how clean and tidy and safe the public parks are. The grass is cut, the grass is kept, the flowers and uh, you don't see any winos, bomja, you don't see any bottles, beer bottles, you don't see any syringes or feral teenagers. It's perfectly safe. And this is a perfect, it's a beautiful park, one of many in this country. Guys, it's been a long day. It's very, very hot, beautiful weather here in Slutsk. So I'm hungry. I've been walking around for the last three to four hours. So I should declare this the time. It's food o'clock. Katleta? Uh, Спасибо. Соусом поливаем. Да, сос. Вкусно. Спасибо. Холодник будем? А, супа есть? Нету супа, холодничок. А, нет, спасибо. Good time, guys. <coughs> so I got a, a salad. I got a beefsteak nezvish and some pasta with some sauce on it. A piece of bread and a drink. And it came to the princely sum of 4 rubles, 82 kopeki. That means 1 euro, 70 cents for a meal in the provinces. Cheapest chips and good home cooked food. Hmm. Can't eat too much dip because it's really, really hot. Hmm. So I have to say, guys, Slutsk is a small town, 60,000 people, has only one street, Ulisa Lenina, and um, outside of a couple of bars and places, not much to do here, but it's a nice, quiet, quaint, and sleepy town. Delicious. Okay, guys, let me enjoy this and I'll get back to you later. Well, guys, my journey to Slutsk, around Slutsk, has finally come to an end. I hope you have enjoyed my tour and my journey around this rather quaint but small town, which I liked. So, on that, guys, it's au revoir. I bid you adieu from Slutsk and join me on my next journey to goodness knows where. Las Vadenia, Dostrechi.